great. Now I don't know where the music is. Oh, it's not it. All right. So let's get on with it. Guten Morgen. Welcome to Quant Box Live, where we get our global macro on. It's 7.03 on the microwave clock. And it's time to uncover the best fundamental opportunities. We're going to look at many different markets to figure out how it, they are positioned, how they're moving, how they're not moving, why they're moving, why they're not moving. Today, we don't need to look at the Commitment to Traders report. Today, we will have updates to central banking forecasts, but it's not anything that we really need to look at, except I might actually pull this up and we can look at the Fed's inflation forecast. And then find out how it's different from reality and how they'll have to adjust the dot plots today. And then we'll, we'll look at the underlying intrinsic trend. Yeah, super, super ridiculously important stuff. It's, it's 80 bucks a month, YouTubers, with a trial. Huh? Very cool. Here's uh, retail positioning versus institutional positioning. Very cool, very cool stuff. Lovely, tell you, mum. So anyways, YouTubers, swing on by, do a trial. Everybody else here is already subscribed, so let's get on with it. Let me remind you that trading is risky, not appropriate for everyone. Your past performance, good or bad, is not necessarily indicative of future results. Please stay small, stay humble, focus on the long term. Never risk money you cannot afford to lose. Let me log in. Me, 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 me. Okay, so when you log in, you have all of this. There's an opportunity for everyone, if they so choose, is to upgrade to the AI alert service. It does send you text messages when super important things have happened. It also sends you a report. Oops. I guess that's it. Let me see. That's yesterday. Uh, yeah, all right. So here's the one that just came out. Pound Aussie, FTSE, Euro Swissy. All right, interesting. So those are the things that have just recently changed in the last couple of hours. I can go back to the pre-London. So you get one pre-London and pre-New York. And, uh, oh, wow, there's a lot going on. So, anyways, whatever. That'll give you a uh, uh, heads up. Let's go into the Q box. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that's hot on the throat. <clears> throat> All right, taking a look at the Q box. Yields are down. All right, that is something I'm rooting for. I'd like to see this by the end of the year be three something, not four something. Oil's up. Yay. Gold flat. No, I'm not on gold. S&P 500 is up. And then, of course, well, we got CPI. And by the way, I'm going to do. Forex start today, earlier today, so we can catch CPI together, just to let you know. So we're waiting for that. Euro dollar, well, euro's being punished. Okay. It's not crazy down in the moment, but, you know, it's got serious negative forces. And Bitcoin is up. So right now I'm long Bitcoin, I'm long oil, I'm short yields. Huh? The trifecta. All right, and a little more risk on by the options traders. An 88 is pretty okay. And we're, I would call this neutral on, on, on hot money, but moving in the bullish direction. Okay, so, you know, that's not a huge signal or anything, but it is moving in the right direction, which down is risk on. Okay, we're back to a four uh, on long term and short term, still nothing. It shows you that this is not random. 
that the market consolidates going into important news events. And you can see it happening here with QuantBox. Yeah, I think it's really, really cool. So you can just see nothing's going on yet today, but nothing's gone on all week. So if you've lost a lot of money this week, it's your own damn fault. And you need to fess up to that. You're trading and nobody else is. Why? Oh, well, that's what I did last week. Well, whatever, bro. Okay. You can see the market is changing. And we literally, you can see it with this page. In the past, it's very difficult to see. But why are you trading aggressively when nobody else is trading at all? That's the disconnect, right? So what I, what did I say on Monday? Hold your horses, Haas. Hold your horses, Haas, is what I said. Yeah. So anyways, holy smokes. Okay. You're not trying to beat the market, remember. You're not trying to beat the market. You're trying to trade with the market. The market's not trading right now. So you got to be very, very careful. Okay, here's that zoom into uh, sentiment changing, a little more bullish. Let's take a look at the scatter plot. Uh, if we get rid of this, this, and this, what do we see? The biggest winners right now are oil and Bitcoin, and I'm long both. All right on, Simon. Cool. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Throw in the stock markets. You know, hanging in there, I suppose. And then yields are down, which is what I want. That's what I want, man. So that one is working for me. This one's working for me. This one's working for me. Cool. Uh, and everything else, I think, is <coughs> excuse me, just waiting. All right, just waiting. Copper kind of flat, silver up a little bit, gold flat, platinum down a little bit. Just sort of a mess. Just sort of a mess. And then only look at dollar pairs. Uh, dollar week, dollar week, dollar week, dollar week, dollar week, dollar week. Yen weaker than the dollar? Oh, my gosh. Dollars... A U.S. dollar is weak across the board, except yen is weaker. You should be long yen pairs. CAD yen up. Aussie yen up. Swiss yen up. Euro yen up. Kiwi yen up. Yeah, man. Yeah, bro. You see how that works? Nice lufle to lumum. All right. The UK doesn't have any GDP. Oh, is that right on? Right, Simon? Cool. Cool. Yeah, well. Uh, what was it, Monday or Sunday, I went over the fact that Swissy looks quite strong. And that you probably want to buy Swissy. And now Yen looks weak, so Swissy Yen makes sense. So anyways, no GDP in the UK. They lost it. It's gone. Hey, what happened to our GDP? Where did it go? 0.0. .0. Thank God it wasn't negative. Okay, so today at 8.30, U.S. CPI. Today, uh, Fed funds rate. Yeah. <clears throat> mm-hmm.
All right, so that's a doozy. Just remember next week, Australia, Swiss National Bank, Bank of England. Lots of central banking stuff next week. Yeah, very cool. Uh, The point I wanted to make here on central banks is that when it comes to the Fed, we're going to see adjustments to inflation expectations. Okay, and they thought inflation would be at 3.1. We're a little higher than that. Was that right, Boris? Sorry, I didn't even look that far out. It wasn't on my mind either, so. Um, But maybe, I guess so. Okay, so anyway, so the issue is if in... Inflation is higher now than they expected in the past. Then they're probably going to raise these numbers. They're, it's not like we're going to go to from 3.4 to 2.7. So now they got to adjust this to maybe, you know, this higher and this a little 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 higher, a little higher right? So this becomes 3.0 and this becomes 2.9. And so they're moving everything up, let's say almost a half a percent, a third of a percent, they move all of this up. And then they're gonna probably move the um, future interest rates. Yeah. And they're gonna move this up and this up and this up. And, and to what degree, you know, to, to one, one and a half. So I think we're going to get this gobbledygook number of one and a half interest rates. I think we're going to get one and a half interest rate cuts, which tells us very little. But anyway, so, uh, but this gets reshaped based on this. Okay. So as of right now, they thought by the end of 2025, so January 1st, 2026, interest rates would be at 4.0. And it seems that that's wrong because inflation didn't come down as they thought. So in 18 months, what is this going to be? Four and a quarter? More likely. So that's what you want to look for in the SEP. All right. Everybody happy? Everybody good? So we don't have a lot of movement here on inflation. This is comparing inflation in the United States with inflation in Europe. And you can see we're quite a bit higher, huh? And later today, we're going to get an update to this. Uh, I can plot Euro on here as well. This is, you can see Euro and 
fifty. You can see dollar. Those those are messed up. But anyways, euro is blue. Ho, 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 ho. So inflation was much higher in Europe and then has come down and now Europe has much lower inflation. A little creep up here, huh? Um, so th this is just comparing the two and typically you would think, you know, euro dollar up, but that's not necessarily true. But what we are doing is, you know, we'd like to see this come down, wouldn't we? Here in the United States, because we're we're asking the Fed to cut interest rates. Well, they can't cut interest rates if inflation's high. They're trying to get it to two something like Europe, and Europe got it to two something and cut. So now we got to get it, you know, to two something so the Fed can cut. I don't know if we can get to two something. Yeah, Boris, it's very, very easy. What does sonars do? Let me throw it back. It does two things. Does the event provide volatility? What's the other thing, Boris, on sonars? Does it produce volatility? What's the second one? Right. In the volatility, has this news event provided a reliable, repeatable pattern? Right. So it it's it's made a determination of what it thinks it is the reliable pattern. Yeah. But there, there's not like four reliable patterns. There's only one euro dollar chart. So it just looks. Remember, it's not looking at the news event. It's looking at the time the news event comes out. So that's it just sees that. So um, and it picked that one. Uh, well, it's C so if it thinks it's CPI, then it then it's CPI, and then it tells you was CPI higher than expected? Was it as expected? Was it lower than expected? Because remember, it's it looks at the volatility, it looks at the pattern, but what pattern? Well, there's multiple time frames, right? And so anyway, so it, it, it breaks things down into all these different pieces. And and what were the patterns on all the time frames when it was greater than expected? Were there patterns on any of the time frames if it was less than expected? Were there any patterns on any of the time frames if it came out as expected? So there's it's quite a matrix of different things going on. Um, but is it going to be perfect, let's say? Um, you know, like uh could it be the other news one of the other three it could be the thing that moves the, the market but remember it's only doing technical analysis quantbox only does fundamentals right and it's not predictive tradars doesn't look for you right uh, it doesn't it doesn't think for you what it does is the grunt work of technical analysis that's it so um so anyways this time of day, the, you know, at 8.30, when CPI comes out, it just looks at the market. And if it chooses CPI over something else or vice versa, it's because it just happens to see patterns on that news event more often. So let's say it's not CPI. It says something else. Well, over time, the other news event produced the reliable pattern. Again, so it's it's kind of like an idiot savant. It's super smart, but dumb. Plain and simple, right? So if it has a reliable pattern, it'll tell you what it is. And that's it. And that's it. 
<laughs> you know. Um, yeah, but does it predict the future? No, not at all. It just tells you what happened in the past. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah, so that's what's going on. So we'll end up using that today for sure. Huh? Yeah. It's okay, Boris. I prefer, for me, I prefer... Um, I prefer year over year. So maybe it's just my preference and uh, influencing the way that this has come together. So I, when somebody says, so what's inflation in the United States? 0.3. You're like, what? What do you mean 0.3? Oh, well, month over month, right? And I, I don't think that way. I think what's the inflation? It's 3.4 year over year, right? So, uh, but nonetheless, like once again, Tradars is agnostic to like fundamentals. It doesn't care about fundamentals. It doesn't care about trend. You know, it just reports the technical analysis. So if it's tracking month over month, and uh, even though it's year over year producing the volatility and the pattern, it still sees the pattern. And it doesn't make a distinction whether it's, it's a, a month over month or a year over year, it just sees the technical analysis, right? So uh, maybe it's dumb and it thinks it's month over month and it's really year over year, but nonetheless, it just sees the pattern on the chart. <laughs> when CPI comes out, that's what it sees, right? So again, probably not perfect, but it is it is genius. Yeah, well, there, there's a, only a certain level that you can get it to, quote unquote, think. Okay. And for it to know like, oh, well, right now market conditions are set to be more sensitive to a change in year over year because the central bank is considering cutting interest rates. You know, it's, it's way too much right it, it's way too much detail in this case it just sees the patterns yeah it doesn't really know why nor does it really care cool uh, here's another way of looking at things I picked a particular time. I don't know. Um, all right. So we're sitting on that 3.4. We were a little higher. Things are coming down. Here's your month over month core. Coming down four to three. So you can see like what the market would like to see is 3.3. And a, 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 a 0 0.2. Well, here, do you want me to guess? Do you like guesses? Or you're like, dude, Wayne, you taught me. Nobody cares about a guess. Like Boris is like, I'm guessing here. Well, look, gasoline prices have come down. Headline comes down to 3.3. You take out gasoline, nothing's changed. I believe on the core and super core, nothing's changed. Meaning the Fed didn't make gasoline prices come down. So when you look at the Fed's impact on the economy, I, I think it'll still be 0 0.3. But headline will come down a little bit. So on the on the face of it, it, it things will look like a marginal improvement. Uh, when you drill in, nothing's changed. But not up is actually fairly decent. 
Anyone want to push back on that? Anybody like it? That was just my basic thought. So Quantbox looked at all this and thought that uh, gold might be a buy over the last month, but it hasn't been that great. I think it, it's like I, I keep challenging the developers and they, they keep doing... I don't know. I guess, you know, everyone's habitual, right? So they just keep doing what they think is right. And then I got to go back and change things. So like I'm looking at this and what are they thinking? Inflation is falling. That's good for the economy that the dollar weakens. So gold should go up. And I'm like, no, no. Yes, the dollar will weaken. Well, so will gold. And so I have that thing in the risk gauges, but then, you know, when I have them build pages, I hate these pages that they built. So uh, whatever. I know they kind of, in my opinion, these suck, but there's something going on. Um, because, for example, like this 2%, I like this, but this doesn't make sense. Their month over month target isn't 2%. So like, you know, they're just programmers. So they're following a basic script, but they don't get it. And then my opinion and, and this, you see this in the risk gauges, but you can see that they st still did it wrong. You can see what they're doing. Inflation is falling. That is good. And you could argue, and this is an argument, so they're not necessarily wrong. But if inflation is falling and that is good for the economy, two things happen. Dollar will tend to weaken because Americans feel rich and they buy stuff from foreign countries. And that means the United dollar leaves the United States and that weakens the dollar. But you bring in stuff. So you like when you buy a BMW, you sell the dollar, but it's not because the dollar is bad. You're selling you're selling the dollar because you're rich and you're like, I want a seven. I want a 760 L I M. Right. So anyway, so you're you're buying a big old Beamer. Well, that's because things are good. Have you ever driven a Mercedes S Class? Huh? AMG? Oh my God! You're just like floating on air, right? So that's you're buying that car because you're you're confident in the future, not because you're unconfident. So, anyways, um, therefore, that would increase aggregate demand, right? Right? That be now demand for everything. That's what aggregate means. Demand not just for BMWs, but for everything. French wine goes up because everyone feels rich. And so you buy gold, right? That's the idea. And I've had arguments with Harvard professors over this too. And I'm like, yeah, I get it. So you, you're rich, so you buy a gold watch and you get a gold front tooth. And, uh, you know, great. Great, great, great. But when you're when you're looking at it from just let's say analysis of financial markets, let's say, I would then tend to say no. It yeah, it increase aggregate demand. But the the uh, one major reason, and especially for if you're focusing on financial markets, you buy gold to hedge inflation. So if inflation's falling, you don't need to buy gold. And so this is just purely an economic argument. So they're saying uh, inflation's falling, buy gold. Okay, aggregate demand argument. But I'll push back and I'll probably have this change, although I hate this page, so why even waste the time? But um, more like, so they're like, you know, 
And of course, they forget the colors and stuff. Come on, guys. So I have to go back and tell them, you made the wrong color here. In fact, I'll just change it myself. But here's the thing. They're like, uh, one, two, three, this is all good. And I'd say, no, uh, I don't know. I might argue against that. <clears throat> so you, the reason I'm bringing this up is not to poo-poo on the developers, um, but for you to decide, well, what's your argument? What do you think? Okay. Now, mine comes from, so like when they say, when when the argument comes up, somebody says, well, it's going to increase aggregate demand, and that would include gold. Okay, well, I won't argue against that. But when you're telling me people like uh, buy gold teeth, gold watches, gold necklaces gold jewelry of all kinds okay i get that that's true but if i'm looking at financial markets what do i really care about what what do you think guys well we we think central banks maybe Boris, you know, to be honest, I think I have a gold tooth. I'm not even entirely sure. I'd have to look. I think I got a gold tooth way back here a million years ago. Uh, yeah, I guess so. Maybe, but you're, but as far as grills and stuff like that, I, you know, I don't know. My music taste has changed. Okay. Okay. Uh, Mark, I don't know. I don't know why. Now, maybe they just say because the dollar's falling. So remember, uh, the, the a currency is a unit of measurement. So if the value of the measurement gets smaller, okay, then the price goes higher, but nothing's changed to the gold. Gold is still an ounce of gold, right? <clears throat> All right, so here's the thing. A central bank buys gold when they're trying to weaken their currency. Okay. And so the bigger question is, are the central banks trying to weaken their currency or strengthen their currency? And that's what this argument leaves out. Stupid drawing tool. Hang on. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's do it this way. You have a central bank. Make this a little thinner. It's got a balance sheet and it has deposits. And it has cash, right? All right. So they sent the central bank on their balance sheet they can use this cash to buy things like bonds mortgages and then well you can buy gold okay so the question is if the central bank buys gold Okay, they buy one billion dollars, we'll say one one or yuan or whatever. They buy gold, okay, so and they're less one billion in cash, right? 
Well, I guess gold in, and then I should probably draw this the other way. Let me move this a little closer. Um, <clears throat> we'll delete this. Okay, so cash out of the central bank, one billion in cash out, one bill, one billion dollar uh, yuan or whatever, whatever unit of currency uh, in. So the balance sheet hasn't changed. It's still balance. Cash plus gold is equal to deposits, correct? Correct. So nothing's changed. So how does this impact the economy? Why would they do this? Thank you for the plural, Jim. I appreciate that. Oops. Every once in a while, someone bitch slaps me and gives me crap about my Harvard degree. And I'm like, excuse me? It's two degrees. <laughs> I bitch slap back. <laughs> uh, excuse me? I have two degrees, bitch? Yeah. Anyways, yeah. <laughs> All right, so why would they do this? What's the purpose? What's the point? They're not doing it because they're like, you know what I really like? I like gold. No, you don't. Why would a central bank do this? Devalue their currency. Why? How does that work, Simon? And it's, yeah, uh, devalue is always a strong word, but uh, okay. Sometimes it's loaded. Like you, it, the world, the way the world works right now is, it seems like everybody has been polarized by media. So people come in and they're like, "It's the crazy radical liberal left agenda." <laughs> like, whoa, bro, whoa, whoa, or some some version of that, right? Like, just whoa, whoa, cool it off your own. cool off, man, right? <laughs> uh they're 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 loaded right uh, so anyways let's just talk about it like we're we're at harvard and we're solving a problem no but how does it work yes that's the why why would they do that yes Oh, I, I, I did this. I didn't leave room. I'll, I'll, I'll see if I can do it. Okay. Uh, quantity um, value. I'll call it value. It could be price. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, this is value equilibrium. The quantity of money equilibrium q e not q q sub e all right so here's the supply of money if you want to call it yuan call it yuan if you want to call it dollar because it doesn't matter which central bank this is not evil oh they're you know they're devaluing their currency well no they're, they're doing it they're running a central bank right simon like i know what you're saying simon but um, some people say it with, you know, disdain. I'm like, no, this is what central banks do. So this is, uh, this is just one mechanism of being a central bank. There's nothing evil. Okay. So anyways, uh, all right. So why would they do this? So they brought gold into the bank and cash left. Where did the cash go? Into the global market. Huh. Into the global market. They bought gold. And they have gold in the vault. Now the money has left and has gone into the interbanking system. So there's more of their currency in the world than there used to be. Quantity, uh, and I'm trying to show you this, and unfortunately I put it right. Quantity went from QE to, we'll call it Q 
queued two. So there's more. There was a shift to the right. You see that? The shift to the right is the increase in money supply. And value of the currency is now V2, and there was a decline in the value of the currency. And, and the balance sheet stayed the same. So it when you when the central bank is doing this, they're weakening their currency. Now, when would they like to weaken their currency? See, it's when you understand this that you understand that. And usually when you read about it in the media, it's because the central bank is evil and corrupt and... Uh, whoa, dude. Whoa, whoa, whoa. All right. Why would you want to do this? This is the big question, everybody. This is where you should be typing. If you understand this, you're going to make money trading gold. And then you understand my argument when it comes to analyzing gold to how I get to my opinion. So general ec ec economists think the way that Quantbox has been programmed, and I'll probably unprogram it. <laughs> I'll do it my way because I'm like, everybody else is wrong. Yeah. What an air, arrogant, huh? What an arrogant. All right. They're doing this because it makes money cheaper. It makes interest rates go down. Rates go down. Money is easier to get. You do not get paid to hold your money in a bank. In fact, you leave money in a bank, you're going to lose out. So you're kind of forced to take money out of your bank and spend it because the price of a TV is going to go up, but the price of an apartment is going to go up, the price of the stock market is going to go up. So you either spend it or invest it, but leaving it in a bank is a bad decision because you're not going to get paid. You're, the interest rate that you're going to earn in the bank is going to be terrible. So you're incentivized to get it out of the bank, put it into the economy, and it spurs the economy. And right now, <clears throat> China has been in you know, dire straits for quite some time. And so they've been buying gold <clears throat> and uh, trying to stimulate their economy by putting more cash in the economy. Remember, if it's not in the bank, it's in the economy. Okay, so once the central bank of China and specifically believes they've come to a point in which the economy is stabilized, they don't need to do this anymore. And then one day, one day, when inflation starts going up, the value of gold will rise. Oh, yeah, that's right. The value of gold will rise, and they'll have to sell it and make a little bit of profit on it, most likely, and then cool off their inflation. They'll do the opposite when inflation is high. See, it's when inflation is rising you buy gold, and then once inflation has stopped rising, they sell it. Well, you know, if inflation's falling, you can sell gold, but once it stabilizes, you can stop selling gold or buying gold, right? So anyways, <clears throat> excuse me. I got to let you guys go. I'll see you a little bit earlier today. Uh, I'll probably start in a half an hour, 8.15, but many of you will be in uh, summer school. But I'll be around for uh, CPI if you want to be, if you want to meet me at Forex Start today. Me happy to do it. And then just a quick thing on Brian's, you know, the difference between risk on and risk off currencies. It's just many, many times it just happens to not every economy is the same, Brian. Some would benefit from a situation of weakening a currency like an exporter, uh, but other 
economies may not, and they may have a slightly different policy, right? There's just a difference, that's all. Yeah. Peace on earth. May the pips be with you, Mayor Pro.